I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. It's about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. Join movement expert Aaron Alexander as he dives into the minds of the foremost innovative healthcare thinkers and movement masters on their approach to optimal health and wellness. Online podcast. Welcome back to Line Podcast. My name is Aaron Alexander. Today's beautiful episode is Mr. Tony Blauer. Tony has been studying martial arts and self-defense and all things around the psychology of violence and fear for over the last 40 years. Uh, he's the founder of Spear Systems Self-Defense and uh, Blauer Tactical Systems. He's worked with everybody, um, first responders, military, law enforcement. Um, his programs are all over the place. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend you guys checking him out. In this conversation, we get into big thing was the psychology of fear that's very fascinating to me i haven't really we haven't done anything about violence on this podcast it's all been like health and green juices and stuff so this is really fun um thank you so much for tuning into the website aligntherapy.com a-l-i-g-n therapy.com on there you can start the five day movement challenge where you start to learn i don't know why i slurred my start start, start. uh you learn the fundamentals of how to integrate more effective movement into your day-to-day existence so flippant important all the time you can be cultivating your your movement if you just know some basic fundamentals and that that's what that's all about um it is christmas eve right now hope you guys are doing beautiful things with your family and your friends and all that stuff um thanks so much for tuning in thanks so much for spreading the show thanks for reviews on itunes thanks so much for comments on instagram all that shit i really appreciate y'all um sending your love all right have beautiful rest of your day merry flipping christmas back to the show with tony blower align podcast this is a nice still image of you right now you're like a hugh hefner <laughs> dog I in the it. lap. I it's very it. pleasant. I People just, are gonna have to check this out I'm in gonna, video uh, territory. I could go to get a bathrobe on if you. Oh, good. Yeah. Should Next I? time we'll okay. do part two. Okay. Bathrobes. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah, that'll be <laughs> that'll be the, the subtitle. Both of us in bathrobes. So, can you explain what the hell you do? I can't. Next question. <laughs> um, the, uh, I collect dogs. Um, Obviously. And uh, actually, my wife does. As as the kids got older, she started getting dogs, and I was like, "Honey, like." Do we need some therapy to discuss this, right? Five like, dogs. Yeah, we've got five dogs now. And um, uh, what do I do? I, I, I do a bunch of things, man. I've always had a, uh, a deep, deep, deep like drive to understand violence and fear. Mm-hmm. Um, I abhor violence. I, I, I don't look at most stuff in the news. I, but I, at the same time, I've got this obsession with trying to make people safer. And, and that's what I've, I've done, like, since I'm 15, 16 years old. That's all. And I would see every martial art that I studied in every class, there would be like this, it was almost like this parallel universe when I was watching stuff where I would see reality against what my perceived reality against what was being shown. And I'd see these like contradictions in movement and in, in psychology. And it was, uh, it was bizarre to me cause it was almost like, like grandiose in my mind. I was like, how could I, like, why would I think that? Like this guy could kick my ass. He's my instructor, but what he's telling me, I know won't work in the street. I just intuitively knew there was something off there. Mm. And, uh, I I just you know the uh, Robert Frost you know metaphor of the the road less traveled. I just went. This is this is all I think about. No matter what job I had, what I was studying in, in university, working for my dad, all all it was like you we were talking earlier. Like your your hobbies are what you do. Like you've got your your professional aspirations, and it's it's you know I'm not gonna articulate it because it's it's eclectic but yeah. all about you know body and, and balance and, and and mindset and all that but you really know that that's your passion when in your free time you're still doing the shit that you're doing professionally it's super convenient yeah so i'll wake up in the middle of the night you know having a dream about a confrontation and write down a drill and then like hopefully you know i can read it in the morning and i i just think about the stuff all the time and it, so now it's been literally 40 years that I've been uh, studying, t- 
teaching, uh, educating on uh, self-defense, but not just the physical side. The, the most important part is the emotional, psychological uh, epiphanies along the way to the point where if I can brag for, you know, for the, the, our, our audience where I've actually gone to like hospitals and, and done workshops for, for PhD psychologists and stuff on fear and fear management and, and they're like they're taking notes going, you know, where did you get this? And it's, it's amazing because there's this, 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 it's for lack of a better term, I call it a chasm between uh, the, you know, the institutional side of research and then pragmatic and real life. And so what I did is I didn't study different types of, of like when I would explain why we're doing something, someone would go, oh, that's behavioral this. And someone would go, oh, that's from this. And that's from, uh, and, and, and uh, recently in the last few years, tremendous um, uh, uh, headway, pardon the pun, has been achieved in neuroscience and understanding how the head right. actually finds its way. And, uh, and it was like, oh, fuck, this is the same as, as like the drill we were doing 30 years ago that we still do. Because I just, I intuitively knew it was right. How did I know that? Because of efficacy, because you could repeat it and it worked and it worked for, you know, it was, uh, you know, the, the, the experience, you know, we had tier one operators to the proverbial soccer mom. You know, yeah. and uh, so it was like this. Oh, this is like, you know, functional human movement as it relates to violence, fear, and aggression. Okay, hmm. and it needed to have, it needed to have the, I call it the the tactical trinity of some sort of, we we had to understand how to weaponize our mind and our body, and the biggest thing that that I the biggest light bulb moment that I try to share is that your limbic system, reptilian brain, the amygdala and all that, that's going to do what it wants based on your training. And then even then it might do what it wants anyhow, based on the nature of the stimulus. And so the more you understand how your mind works, the more you're in control of how you convert the stimulus and the response. And so I would just in, in simpler terms say, if we train our cognitive brain, to understand what a reptilian brain wants to do and going to do anyhow, then you can create a harmonious relationship so it's not it's not split in the moment of, of danger. Mm. And that's really how we biomechanically and, and, and neuropsychologically hack self-defense. Because we, like, we do a one-day course called Be Your Own Bodyguard. And most of the, the experts in the community refer to me as a fraud, as a scam, as a this, as a, because... In their mind, what they don't understand is the unconscious bias is they think I'm saying you can learn jiu-jitsu in a day or you can learn boxing in a day. Or you can learn karate or tie in a day, which is ridiculous. Of course you can't. But you can learn the principles of personal safety in a day in the same way you can learn CPR in, a, in less than a day. Yeah. And, and you've got, when you do a CPR course, you learn how to detect and, and, and diffuse and defend. That's the three Ds from our system. Uh, metaphorically, you apply that to, the, you know, is, you know, tactical first aid, but that's four or five hour CPR course doesn't make you a paramedic and being a paramedic doesn't make you an emergency room physician. Yeah. And so the, the conventional world and even people listening to this, like if in through osmosis, you think it takes this many years to be a black belt. And if you're a black belt, then you can defend yourself. And they're completely, they're completely different arenas. Yeah. Well, it's like, uh, you don't need to, uh, you don't need to understand what's behind the screen of your iPhone or Android or whatever you use in order to understand how to use the apps. Right. You know, like you, you can get a lot of value. It's like, okay, what if I just get this course that understands how to like work the function? And then right. maybe I'm so into phones right. that I want to know what's behind the right. curtain right. and s invest two right. years, you know, yeah. learning all the little and, and that's, doohigs. And, and that's an interesting metaphor. You know, we work with a lot of uh, military and law enforcement groups. That's our main business, you know, or is, is that behind the scenes. We've been doing that for almost three decades. Uh, and uh, in our course, even if you're in a layperson's course, we do our best to explain a little bit about the neural circuitry of fear so that you understand when you understand how something works, there's an, a, 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 like a different level of appreciation. And I refer to this as the subject matter versus substance matters, you know, metaphor is yeah. like everyone can be a subject matter expert. You know, you read a book, you, I know what that is, you know, the, and, and, uh, but I really believe that and it's, it's like the Simon, uh, you know, cynic, what's your why? You know, in 1988, we, you know, I wrote an article for uh, Inside Karate Magazine called The Word to the Wise. 
and it was spelled W H Y S. You're good right? with those. Yeah, I, no I, fear. K N O W. K N O W. Fear. Fuck I, fear. Fuck fear. Does a lot is, better that also, shirt. Fuck fear is, is <laughs> yeah it does. <laughs> but you know the, the fun part is is fuck is an acronym. Face it, understand it, confront it, know it. Oh good. And it's and it's uh, the um, it's much cooler if you come to my seminar and, and do it. But I'll since we since we shared it here, you know, imagine it's the end of the seminar and and we've gone through a whole bunch of these like whiteboard shit and story stuff and interaction. Everyone's like, yeah, you know, I go, well, you have, it's a choiceless choice. You're in a, whatever your confrontation is doing nothing, sitting there. You remember the scene, Jim Carrey and dumb and dumber, uh, when he's getting attacked, he's in the bathroom weeping, going mom, and he's got his thumb in his mouth and he's like in the stall in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, like that's, you can hide under the desk. You can, you know, hide in your closet, but if shit's happening, whether it's, you know, medical, violent relationship, it's not going away unless you, at some point you've got to confront it. Hmm. You know, it will, it will find you. And, um, uh, and so it's the, the, the end of the seminar and I go, so listen, if you can't remember all the stuff that we just went over in the last 90 minutes or four hours or however long the seminar was, I said, here's a simple acronym for you. First of all, you have to face it. Everyone agree with that? And they're like, yeah. So I write face it, right? And then I go, by facing it, you begin to understand it. You may not understand it all right away, but now you're, uh, you're demystifying it. So it's not fear of the unknown. It's fear of the known. But you're a little bit more in control because you're going, oh, that's what it looks like. And then you, at some point, you've, there's, there's a timeline happening, right? There's, a, there's an hourglass going. <laughs> like there's a confrontation coming up but i'm facing it now i'm in the right direction my back's not turned to the problem i'm facing the problem starting to understand it and i need to confront it and if you do those three steps you get to no fear hmm. and and it originally started i make this joke about the the no fear company remember the t-shirt company yeah and so uh i grew up afraid of of everything you know <laughs> but i was very athletic I was very competitive, so I wrestled, I was gymnastics, I was, uh, you know, one of the top skiers in Canada, I grew up in Canada, I competed, um, but I did it internally, I was just like, a, like a, a SNS mess, like, mm. I was just like, fuck, I'm going to kill myself in this, like, this course looks really hard, what if I wipe out, what if I hit that tree there, what if I, and I would still, I'd go, and I was like, but I was like, it was like, if you, I tell people, like, if, like, if you're mountain biking down a hill, you can look at the openings or you can look at the obstacles. Yeah. One is probably going to make you crash. And one is, you know, but I, I was one of those guys that saw both, but would, you know, so I was always sabotaging my potential because I had the, the weight of fear on me all, at, at all times. So I was obsessed with this, with uh, everything. And my direction became self-defense at a, at, a, at a young age. Uh, and that became transcendent, that if you, you understand how to protect yourself or your family, then you could look at almost every other confrontation in life and go, well, like that's not going to punch me in the throat. So. Yeah. You talk, I, so I just finished a, a 10 day Vipassana. It's like a 10 day silent meditation. You don't bring any cell phones or notebooks or anything. Crazy. So all you do is just, how was that? Uh, it was one of the more impactful things that I've ever experienced. It was really like, it felt very important. Right. <laughs> you know, it felt yeah. really good. Um, you know, and in that it's the, the whole practice of a Vipassana style meditation is essentially maintaining equanimity or, you know, balance or like ease, like everything's going to change, you know, so impermanence, right. You know, so it's the practice every moment that you have a pain in your knee, you have the feeling like you want to check your text, which you hopefully that's gone by now. Cause you've been sitting there for eight days or whatever. Um, but it's, it's like, Oh, instead of it just being you reacting to it and going and checking the text or going in, you know, whatever, some kind of sensual pleasure. Um, it's like, Oh, okay. An opportunity to, you know, remain equanimous with this. Okay, cool. And you sit there with it for 15 minutes and then it goes away. You're like, oh, okay. And then something else pops up, mm -hmm. you know, instead of going and just feeding that fire, you say, oh, okay. Another opportunity. My shoulder really hurts. Okay. I wonder what happens if I just sit with it instead of reacting to it. Mm -hmm. And every one of those, it's a little, you call micro, com, micro combat. I think I've heard you, you yeah, mentioned like a micro fight. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a little micro right. fight. Right. You know, we all have those opportunities to have these little micro fights in our day to day, but usually we just spend our day kind of like, you know, reacting to everything. Yeah. It's funny in, in, uh, in that same article from the eighties, I wrote that, uh, every day people are faced with confrontations and, how you handle that confrontation on that day 
actually determines the quality of your day and therefore the quality of your week and therefore the quality of your month and therefore the quality of your life that we, we aren't taught confrontation management and you know that's kind of a hmm. like a, a a combative sounding you know it's not as you know elegant as uh, you know the 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 meditation no it's but, the but same it, but it's it, exactly but, but, but I'm, what i'm saying is yeah. like it's 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 same same yeah you know control your mind and you, you control your body and you know everyone like that you know that's that's a cliche because it's true that uh i was just listening to uh, a book on my walk today and i was i have two apps open i i listen to this stuff and it and what i'm looking for is is resonance and uh, uh connection to our research just because that's that's what keeps me stimulated as as the the guy that's writing the programs and it was it was fascinating that the that understanding how we decide things creates that that internal balance and uh nowhere is that more important when your life or your family's life is in danger yeah. so uh but i get that and it's funny uh i don't know what triggered it but a week ago i've got i've got two phones um and one has all my social media on it and one doesn't and i got the other one i've had it for a couple of years now and i would say this is the phone i'm going to take when i'm out to dinner and it's an emergency phone there's only like eight people that have the phone number on it but now nobody in business can reach me and what i found was i always had my business phone with me and we'd be at dinner with my my family and something would pop up on facebook and someone would tag me and i right. i go you know guys this is how i'm paying for dinner tonight i got to work right and i rationalized the whole thing uh, a week ago i something was going on and i put down the phone and i said this phone stays in my business phone stays in my office I'm not going to have it on my night table i'm not going to check instagram facebook twitter or anything but once a day and you know you, like you know everyone's laughing my my wife's laughing haha <laughs> like you know the kids are laughing sure dad but i was like able to do a cold turkey and i cannot tell you how productive this week has been not having uh not being on social media except for the once a day i go i go check cuz i like to i answer all my shit on hire at a company yeah and i'll go do it but it was this uh made me think about that with with respect to this the silent meditation i did something uh like that but it was interactive uh it was a lot of um you but you had to turn in your phone at the, at the beginning of this eight day session cool but there was a lot of there was a lot of stuff that you did with other people so it was a lot of you know introspection and 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 not silent which i can imagine is just like an incredible incredibly deeper level of like <laughs> yeah it's you just know. you're being able to gather your your energy or you know your whatever your power or whatever into one point mm -hmm. you know if you're teaching somebody how to do a front squat or something like that and you're like okay i want you to you know screw your feet into the ground and, you know, get your knees out and create torque and engage the hips and stack the spine what you're doing with that is you're trying to to gather your kinetic mm -hmm. potential your energy mm -hmm. You know, and so every time, if you always have that thing of like a notification, that's like you're right. <laughs> dropping the knee in and it's like, you're still squatting, mm. but you're dumping all this power. Whereas if you can get rid of it, maybe right. that's like a stretch of an analogy, but no, no, I think it's I, real. <laughs> it, you know, it's, 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 I, I dig it because I, you know, the whole spear system, which is like the, the, the strategic and tactical application of the startle flinch. Right. And that's and, and so I say, hey, when you flinch, nobody, nobody, there's no cognitive step to flinching. If I pick like, my coffee up and I flung it in your face and you did that, you there's no moment when you went, fuck, he's throwing hot coffee in my face. I should flinch. Right. Right. If if if, uh, you know, we're walking outside and a dog starts running towards us and we go, shit, we do that. There's no moment where we're going, OK, he's 22 feet away. I'm over here. I could jump up this tree. There's you flinch. And so what we noticed uh, was that you just made me think of that when you when you talked about kinetic potential because I would say right now we're potential energy and when we start moving we're kinetic energy hmm. and the fastest most explosive thing you can do is going to be uh, um, some sort of you know unconscious trigger that's connected to an 80 or 100,000 year old survival reflex. It's right. not going to be your brain going, should I wax on, wax off here or should I do lateral or should I, you know, in fact, uh, um, this is probably 30 years old, this guy Hicks, it's called Hicks Law, and it was a study in human response time. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people don't get it, but I love using it because it's so simply uh, put that the, the 
theoretically the fastest human response time would be one stimulus, one response. Yep. That if I said to you, you only have one thing to do when only this one thing happens. Well, ultimately you could train that, train that, train that. And then that would be, so if I say, hey, when the light goes red, hit this button. But what he would do is he said if when he added a second stimulus, he doubled reaction time. And if he added another choice to do, he doubled reaction time. Mm. And so I make this joke when I'm doing our seminars. I go, how fast could you get dressed if all you had were the same style blue jeans, seven pair of blue jeans, yeah. seven white T-shirts, right. seven sneakers. It's white. like Steve Jobs. Right. Of, what, what's the Facebook guy's name there? It's a similar thing. Where I, just, I don't got time for that. Right. I just got my pants. Right. <laughs> You know, <laughs> instead of like standing there going, oh, oh. and it, you know, it's funny, like, cause you don't have time to deliberate like that in a confrontation and yeah. we don't have time to deliberate like that in, in, in real life. And you think about, you know, indecision and, you know, we've all been around people who just like, they decide impulsively on stuff or they decide real quickly. And it's like, Hey, where do you want to go for dinner? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know about this. And I'm like that indecision just is eating up time that we don't get back. And it's a silly example, but, mm -mm. but, uh, you know, to your point um, about kinetic uh, energy and potential and everything, that's everything. And that's what we, you know, that for years and years and years, I was a martial artist studying whether it's boxing, wrestling and Taekwondo and all this stuff. And then I noticed that anytime I was in a real confrontation, uh, if it didn't go physical, I thought I was going to throw up. I felt like I had a vacuum stuck up my ass, sucking out my insides, like just the nervousness of the potential danger. Um, and I, I was like, didn't matter how good I got physically. I still, why was I scared? Why was I feeling this way? Why was I the, the aftermath to my nervous system? And then when it was physical, I wasn't using my complex motor skills because real violence didn't look like dojo training, martial art, right. you know? And so, uh, um, and it was, um, a student of mine, 1980, and it was an accidental, uh, uh, teaching relationship I was working in in my father's factory which had nothing to do with martial arts with the clothing import export and uh, my dad's best client was also a real good friend of his his son his 15 year old son was having some bully issues at school and he always he knew I was into martial arts he you know he'd come visit and I'd be kicking a bag or doing you know complex motor skills and he said, hey, would you teach Mitch for me? I don't want to. He's having some issues. I don't want him to grow up, you know, with a, some sort of bully syndrome, you know, and, or get hurt. So I started training this kid. And uh, what was I going to teach him? I was going to teach him what I believed in, right? So I taught him how to punch and slip and block and move and kick and clinch and all the physical stuff. And uh, sure enough, he gets into a confrontation one day at school. And I was also very... Um, you know, now I tell people, hey, scenario will dictate force must parallel danger. You know, I think retroactive. You know, we live in a litigious world. There's a whole lecture around. I go, we're just options facilitators. We're not telling you what to do. Yeah. You got to evaluate, blah, blah, blah. So I said it less elegantly or eloquently back in 1980. And, um, uh, but I remember one day, a couple of weeks before the fight, Mitch is like, this kid's like, I can tell it's going to go f physical soon, coach. You know, like, because up until then it had been verbal abuse. And, and I was just preparing him, like almost like a guy like who knew he was going to have a fight one day and we were, just <laughs> we were just working out. And I said, well, Mitch, don't let him put his hands on you. Don't let him hit you, you know, uh, and until like the school wasn't doing anything, blah, blah, blah. I come in for his next lesson and he's sitting there in his room. We're just a private lesson in his den. And he's sitting there and you could see the steam coming out of his ears. He's like, ah. And uh, I was like, dude, what happened? And he's like, motherfucker. He's like freaking out. 15 year old testosterone. Mm. Rah. And I go, dude, I understand you tell me what happened. He said, well, I'm running for school, running late for class. And as I was running in the hallway, he was sitting at the back and he saw me come and he reached out and kicked, like tripped me. And I went flying in front of like 15 kids and everyone started laughing and I'm picking up my books. And uh, I'm furious because now like he's embarrassed me in front of a bunch of my peers and, and, uh, he said, I like, I looked at him. I said, you, you know, you're such a fucking asshole. And, and he stood up. He goes, what did you call me? And he gets in my face and he pokes me. And he says, I remember you said, like, don't let the guy touch you, right? And so I grabbed him and I slammed him against a locker bank. And I said, don't fucking touch me. I don't even know who you are. You've been bugging me since school started. And then he stops talking and he looks at me. He's describing the fight, right? Hmm. And I go, and? He goes, he punched me in the face really hard and dropped me. And I go, dude. 
Like, why didn't you block? Why didn't you parry? Why didn't you slip it? And he goes like this. He goes, well, and he didn't know. He's like recreating it. He goes, my left hand was holding his shirt and my right hand had my books. And in that moment, right then, Aaron, it was like the god of self-defense hit me. This 1980 hit me with a lightning bolt. And I went, oh, my God, we teach self-defense wrong. In that moment, these like years, remember I said earlier when we started talking, it's like I, I could see that something was wrong. It was like a parallel. I'd see the move, and then I'd see what was really going to happen. Yeah. And i go like, wait a minute. There's this, like this weird juxtaposition. This isn't going to line up. And now it had just happened three-dimensionally to one of my students. And, and I go and I tell people when we do our train the trainer or uh, trainer development course, I go like, like I could have said, dude, why'd you compromise your hands? Or, you know, dude, like you're too close and you didn't turn your hips. And I could have blamed it on the student, but I blamed it on the system and I blamed it on the teacher. I took, I was like, dude, are those your books? He's like, yeah. I said, get, give me your books. Show me how you grabbed them. And I reverse engineered what happened. And this is 1980. So 19. It was seven, eight years before I started investigating startle flinch response. Uh, and so right now I understand the cross extensor or push away danger. What happens is that you, when you go to electrical school, they always tell you if you're going to check a live current, use the back of your hand mm. so that if the cross extensor fires, your hand doesn't, you don't, you don't go like this. They found like people dead. This is pain is the mother invention, right? <laughs> because the hand is like around it like this. Yeah. So if you hit here and it does that and it recoils yeah, away, so you never go, it. you know, if, you're going to get caught on that. So what happens is whatever, when, if I make you flinch, whatever you're holding, you'll lock onto. Hmm. So they have found like cops killed in a, in, on this, like in a gunfight on the side of the road, still holding somebody's driver's license hmm. in a hand, right? Um, you know, uh, holding brass. Uh, you'll see, I've got pictures in our seminars of like, you know, sudden violence and, and people are flinching, but if they were holding a drink in their hand or holding a, you know, a piece of pizza, you know, baseball bat comes flying into a crowd and people are still, you know, they're, they're, they're going, oh. they yeah. can't, they're not going to let go and put, you know. And so the, that's what happened to him, that when he grabbed the guy and he was holding, you know, and the guy hit him, there was no, the, the gap between stimulus and response, the brain didn't have enough time to neuromuscularly say, hey, eject the, the objects in your hand and cover your head. And so that became the the genesis and the impetus for a whole new way to look at scenario-based training. And then eight years later, doing some drills, I, I stumbled across, uh, across this whole start of flinch thing. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, that's the serendipity of it. It wasn't like, oh, I need a cool acronym to, you know, it was, no. it was like, wow, like, how do I solve this problem? Bruce Lee gets into all that stuff of kind of like the, the, the mode or the, the methodolo methodology kind of getting in the way. It's like name your name, yeah. name, name the move yourself, like make it your own as opposed yeah. to. So, so Bruce, of course, was a, you know, he, he passed away in 73. I was 13 and was a huge inspirational uh, guide to bazillions of people, but, but myself included, right? Like yeah. everyone was a Bruce Lee nut. His most important stuff was his philosophical yeah. but as as with many things because he passed away he became this like you know iconic thing and then people started uh reproducing tried to reproduce exactly how he moved and the irony of that he used to have a uh, i told you not to do that right but, the, <laughs> but uh, i don't know i don't know how well versed you are bruce you seem to know uh, quite a bit but he had a uh, a miniature um tombstone that he kept in his office and in the inscription of in memory of a once fluid man crammed and distorted by the classical mess hmm. and it was a reminder of him to use no way as the way right to be that spontaneous person yeah. so there's somewhat I, 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 irony and it happens like when any you know hero dies you got a tribute band and they're just playing that you're not recognizing that that you know Hendrix or Morrison or or, or whoever you're into that that you know, died suddenly, wouldn't be playing that same song a year later that way, you know, uh, that they would evolve in their, their, you know, so, so yeah, he, he was definitely a, a catalyst to stuff. The, there, there is a, a lot of, of evolution that, that resulted in, in the research. And I, and I, and I honestly would say like, 
you know, he was a platform to having that open mindedness. I mean, yeah. everyone wanted to do that. So. so what is, so practically someone comes up to you in the street and wants to steal your wallet or someone's, you know, attempting to mug you some, right. some fashion. Is there some type of like step-by-step -step process for folks? That was a pretty broad yeah. way of describing it, but yeah, it's, I mean, the, the, the first thing that we do is we talk about and teach people uh, I use the, the, the what I call the three D's: detect, diffuse, defend. Detect and avoid. Defuse. D E F U S E. Take the fuse out. How do I disempower you? Right. Mm. You know. Uh, and then defend uh, is the, is the third stage. And to see to see this this timeline and this chronology changes how you navigate it. Most I call it the Star Trek model. Most methods of self defense and martial art only start after D three starts. So, so think about this. If you look at a timeline here, let's say you're the bad guy and I'm the good guy. Yeah. You're looking me up and down. I'm in a bar and I look over. And the first, so every victim of violence who lived to tell the tale said they had a bad feeling before the attack. Sure. Nobody talks about that, hmm. right? So I'm here like that. Go, why is that guy looking at me? And so my heart's pounding and I'm going, fuck, you know, he's big. And he's like, okay, he's, shit, he's coming over to me. Yeah. I don't even have a plan going yet on how to breathe, how to think, how to distract you. What's my escape route? Improvise weapons. Why do it? Why should I fight? Why should I not fight? Right. All of those things are things that you in terms of your enhancing your survivability or things you should think about before. Right. And they're no different. We don't do it for personal defense, but we do it for insurance in your house. You know, life insurance. We do it for car insurance. Hey, in case you get a flat tire, do you want this tire and wheel coverage? Right. Like we figured out how to do that for everything that doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Right? yeah exactly. And and. Um, and so I use the Star Trek metaphor where if, if you do martial arts, you probably learned how to get out of a headlock, but you probably didn't learn how to intercept a headlock. So everything starts after D3. It's like, okay, if the guy has a gun at this angle, this is the disarm. If he tackles you here, if you're on the ground here, if he throws this kick, so it's always this stimulus response and actions faster than reaction. And in a sudden violent encounter, action's always the bad guy because the good Samaritan is not walking around going... You know, I'm a good Samaritan, but today I'm going to rape somebody just for... <laughs> Try it out. You know, like, yeah, just not so much to do it again, <laughs> but it's like, things. yeah, I should just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Um, right? So so it's funny. So we break things down. At a, and I look at it like a, like a simple metaphor is like, are you a handyman or are you a carpenter? Are you a carpenter or are you an architect? And so even when someone comes to a one-day course, we give them like a, kind of this mental blueprint because that helps you navigate. Hmm. It's like if I just drop you in the forest somewhere and I go, by the way, you're lost. You might sit under a tree and just fucking die. But if I gave you a map of the forest before that and taught you a little bit about survival and taught you a little about fear, and then I dropped you in there, you could kind of like visualize where do you think you are and look for some landmarks. There's a good chance you're going to survive. It may not be a fun experience, but you've at least got some mental blueprints on, on, on how you're going to navigate this. So, you know, coming back to your question, because like on every podcast I do, someone goes, well, tell our listeners what to do if like a serial killer who's got 10 kills kidnaps you and says, put the lotion on your body. And they give me like this, like, like ninja quest thing where, Damn. well, everyone's going to die. You're creative that. people. Right. I'm like, somebody wants your wallet. Right. <laughs> I'm going, that's so boring, Aaron. <laughs> Just your wallet. In all seriousness, like, so here's a, here's a, here's a, a, a great, I love this. I got, I got asked, remind me to come back to that, but I got, yeah. I got asked, I was teaching in Canada like 20 years ago to a police, uh, police group. And um, one of the officers volunteered at a senior citizen's home. And she says, hey, would you come talk to some seniors this week while you're in town for the course? And I like, I say yes to everybody, right? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And she says, okay, how's Wednesday night? I go, perfect. And, you know, I'll pick you up. We'll go over. So, like, I'm going over there. And all of a sudden, like, and I'm one of these, like, the SPEAR system, SPEAR stands for Spontaneous Protection Enabling Accelerator Response. Spontaneous uh, Protection refers to your body's physiology, psychology of start of flinch. Accelerated response refers to the sudden adaptation through Pavlovian conditioning of if I'm going to flinch, how do I throw a palm strike from a flinch? If it makes me flinch, I inhale. How do I use that breath control that was triggered unconsciously by the sudden threat, right? So how do I use this and weaponize my forearms or my palms? And it's almost like having an organic airbag. It's pretty fucking amazing, mm -hmm. right? And um, we... Uh, 
So I make this joke because what we're talking about is that we embrace the flinch, we use the kinetic energy of it, and then we move towards the danger. So we go flinch, we our hands go outside 90, fingers splayed, which is what our physiological system wants to do. The cross extensor reflex wants to push away danger. And now we're just weaponizing that. So talk about organic and efficient. Mm. Um, cool. and yeah, and, and so what's neat is I go, uh, so whenever I flinch in real life, I go, I'm good with that. Like someone like says, hey, you know, come teach these seniors. So as I'm walking in, I have this like, psychological flinch where I go, oh, fuck, I've never taught seniors before. What do, how do seniors move? What do they want? And, and I'm there and I'm in the room where it's going to take place. It's six o'clock or six 30 and they're half hour early and in comes these people in senior home, uh, wheelchair walkers, well, someone with an intravenous, like another person with intravenous sitting down. Thinking of all these potentials they could do with the intravenous bag, like choke them out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and it and it's and it's and it's funny, Aaron, because I'm sitting there and I start to get this adrenaline dump and nervousness because my typical speech and talk revol revolves around somebody who has uh, access to mobility and speed. Guys, run away here. Right. Nike has the best self-defense program, right? Like, just do it. Go. Like, like yeah. you know, like, just to, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, like there's no fast movement happening here. Hmm. And I start getting really, really nervous. And I'm there with, like, two of my assistants that were there for the course. And I lean over. I go, I have no fucking idea what I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm kind of, like, freaking out right now. Like, I'm going to stand up here and go, Tony Blair's not going to talk to you about self-defense. And I'm like... Uh, who's got a question? Right, right. Get a, get a gun. I'm right. out. Right, <laughs> yeah. and um, you know, and then you run into this stuff. Like, like, what if someone says to me, "Hey, we're anti-gun. What can you teach us?" And we're senior yeah. citizens, right? And I'm just, I'm just saying, like, like, isn't there a way to just always inspire people and get? And the the trick is here is how my whole thing is to make you um, make make our relationship irrelevant and obsolete are not obsolete no, irrelevant that. yeah that's what i do with people you know, is, that's my intention as yeah, well i want you to work with yourself yeah if yeah. you know and if i need a codependent relationship to, to pay off my car right or or you know it's like you should be able to do this yourself and and i've got so many stories of of you know success stories of, of students who've used our system to avoid violence or get out of a violent encounter and and they'll email or call or if I'm near them, if I live near them, they'll go, oh my God, you saved my life last night. And I'm like, I wasn't there. No, but like, no, but I did the thing that you said. I go, and I'm always like, I wasn't there. I didn't tell you to come to the class. I didn't tell you to think about it. So in fact, there's lots of victims <laughs> of violence who didn't do shit. They cooperated with the bad guy. Mm -hmm. You didn't, you fought back. This is on you. Yeah, but no, no. And I'm like inside, I'm going, yes. This is like, cause it's, it's great. It's like someone calls you up and goes like, my neck doesn't bother me anymore. Yeah. Those exercises are working. You, you're, you know, you know, should I come see you again? No, like, like hit me up in a month. Let me know how you're doing. Yeah. And, and, but inside you're like, oh, this is working cause you're helping people. And so coming back to the seniors, I'm like, what am I going to say to them? And I was thinking and thinking, and all of a sudden it hit me that somebody who's 80 or 90 years old and is still fighting for life. They're still like, I'm still living, right? They're, you know, what do they care about? Do they really care if they get mugged? What do they care about really? And I don't know why this popped in my head and maybe it was something that had happened to a friend of a grandmother's or whatever, where their, their fear was if they had to have an operation, like falling, breaking their hip and getting put under and not recovering from that their fear and I'm, I'm able to, you know, it's a thing that like that, that parallel, I'm able to look at a scenario and go, okay, these are like the issues here. It's not what we, it's not how to get out of a headlock. It's why didn't I notice those two guys on the corner looking at me, then putting out their cigarette as I was looking down, texting to somebody, how come I didn't notice that they were lining me up during the detect and avoid stage, Yeah. right? And if you look at, I'm jumping around a lot, but if I look at this chronology of confrontation, detect and avoid, that's situational awareness. 
we teach situational awareness differently. We teach self def uh, situational awareness as an internal external skills. If you don't have self awareness, you can't have true situational awareness. If you're not aware of your bias, your prejudice, your arrogance, your myopic view of the world, I live in a safe place. I don't give a shit. Like I got insurance. I'm not going to cross the street. I pay taxes. Yeah. Like you'll, it's amazing. I go, well, that type of arrogance or attitude is going to impact what you actually see in the real world. Yeah, it's a huge handicap. Right? And so, but situational awareness, a lot of people go D1, D2, D3. So where there's, th there's three-thirds of a confrontation, I go, well, not exactly. Because the actual ambush, when someone walks up to you and goes, give me your wallet, and you go, what? Give me your fucking wallet. We just whack, and they hit you, and next thing you know, you know, you like that was really one second of like a five-minute evaluation. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And so when you think about the timeline, hmm. there was maybe four minutes and 30 seconds of somebody getting closer to you, somebody getting closer to you. And that might be four days or four years, depends on, on the scenario. And then there's like 30 seconds of sizing you up. Hey, man, got a light. Hey, man, you know, what kind of phone right. is that? Right. And they're evaluating. Is anyone watching? Is this guy trained? Is this guy like because 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 the bad guy intuitively, you know, there's this, there's like our brain is always juggling from like the emotional brain and the cognitive brain going like do i have a good feeling or a bad feeling and then what do i know what you know what is actually like a fact as i understand it i call this the three eyes instincts intuition and intelligence and so the 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 next so you got four minutes of let's say stalking and assessment and 30 seconds of dialogue and then there's maybe 30 seconds of violence so if you spend all of your day practicing how to get out of a headlock, how to block a kick, how to do a gun disarm, you haven't spent any time on D1, D2. And this is where people lose their shit. This is, this is the, that, that, all of the emotional psychological arsenal is, is cultivated, matured, developed during D1 and D2. People don't, don't understand it. It's why like you've watched like boxing matches or MMA fights where the guy's like being interviewed leading up to the fight. I'm going to kick his ass. It's going to be, I'm going to knock him out. And then they see him warming up in the, in the changing room and you go, that's going to be a good fight. And then he gets out there and all of a sudden he's got like deer in the headlights and he's stiff. And he's like, boom. And, and he just, something happened. And what it was, was the emotional psychological arsenal was not supporting the physical skill set he hmm. cultivated during the training camp. The and physical's that's like the cherry on top. Then there's like the deeper yeah, well, matrix that's holding it. Maybe not the cherry on top, maybe a little bigger than that, but it's well, well, it's 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 critical. It's it's like if you look at you know why Rich Froning dominates or why Matthew Fraser. A lot of it is is there's a lot of guys that are as strong as fast as them, but it's the mental toughness, yeah, right. And so it's not even it's weird. You need to have if you're competitive, you know. When I use a sport example, you can't fake endurance, you can't fake skill, you can't, you know. Um, for self-defense, you don't need all that, and, and you, you, ju you just need to move and give yourself permission to move. But, uh, I mean, it's, that's, a, that's a deeper thing. But anyways, like, I, you know, I'm telling 19 stories at once. I'll try to remember 18 of them. No, I like all But the, um, the senior citizens, I came out there, and I said, okay, I'm here to talk to you about self-defense. How many of you had a talk about self-defense before? They'll put their hand up. I said, did you like them? Did you enjoy them? And they're like... You know, I go, what didn't you like about them? I go, well, you know, a lot of the stuff made us more paranoid. Like you needed this deadbolts and locks and buzzers and pagers. And I said, well, okay, let's do something completely different. Like how many of you, uh, if you were walking around the area, uh, really give a shit about the 40, 60, 80 or 100 bucks in your wallet? And this is like my heart's pounding because I was just going with an intuition, right? And they're like... Yeah, you don't really, you care more about your grandkids' photos in your in your purse or your $100. And they're like, yeah, my grandkids' photos. So you don't want to lose that, right? And I said, do you care more about, like, like what are you thinking of two, like, punks come up to you and they, they're looking around and they go to grab, aren't you thinking, like, what happened to society? Like, you used to be able to walk in the street, right? And they're like, Aaron, they're like this. And I said, are you worried that maybe this is going to get violent? What if they push you down to grab your wallet, you fall, you break your hip, and now you got to be put under? How many of you are afraid of going to the hospital at your age? Right. All of them. I said, so what we really want to do is get to the left of the ambush and understand the danger here. And so here's what I'm going to tell you to do. If you're walking down the street and you see two kids and you get a bad feeling because every victim of violence who lived to tell the tale said, I had a bad feeling, I want you to do this. I want you to reach into your wallet, or reach into your purse, 
take out your wallet, take out your money and step onto the grass. And I want you to hand the money like this. That'll circumvent the violence. And if they push you down, you fall on the grass, not on the concrete. Hmm. And they fucking looked at me like this. And they, one of them said, what if they're not going to mug you? I said, then they're not going to take your money. Hmm. <laughs> it was like, you know, it was like, holy shit. And like, that's how I teach self-defense. And you listen to that and you go, like, what's the flaw in that? There is no flaw. Yeah. Right. And, but what it was, it was like, I wasn't going to teach these senior citizens flying sidekicks or knee bars or, or uppercuts, you know, or how to use their intravenous to <laughs> choke somebody, you know? Um, and it's funny because I, I got called by, um, a hospital when I lived in Montreal to teach, uh, to come in and present a, a case to bring us in to teach self-defense, uh, to a group who had, MS and uh, they were talking to me and I said look you know it's about situational awareness it's about verbal de-escalation the good Samaritan the average person like you or I we don't want violence anywhere near us it's not about like yeah I kicked that guy's ass last night like I look at when people like post things on our feeds and they go what do you think of this self-defense situation I always answer that's a douchebag fight I don't comment on that mm. most of the fights that people look at and comment on are douchebag fights what is a douchebag fight? A douchebag fight or two douchebags fighting. <laughs> uh, so a, dou a douchebag fight is a fight that isn't, a, it's, not a, it's not what I would d d um, uh, define as a credible violent encounter. Hmm. A credible violent encounter is one, a situation that you truly can un cannot avoid. Uh, ATM mugging. It's like jacket, the high school fight invasion. where it's like, meet me after yeah. school in the parking lot. Well, you'll see this, like even a road rage Four fight. Guy gets out of his car, you get out of the car, and you're fucking, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Yeah. People are filming. And, yeah. you know, I always tell them, like, if there's, if there's more than one cell phone filming it, and there's people gathering around, it's probably a douchebag fight. Yeah, I get that. Right? And so, like, you know, I got three kids, I got a business. I'm not interested. And, and I never was like that, you know, whether you want to believe that or not. You know, I was never, and not you, but anyone watching this I was you know I, I I hated violence I hated fighting I wanted to understand I ended up developing a system I wish somebody had taught me when I was a kid it was just like a, it was cerebral it was visceral it was emotional it it had an explanation for why I would get a fear spike and and had a and had to control that and and how to talk my way out of situations and not feel like a pussy. Yeah. What about know? a person that's not an elderly person? Like something that I've, I remember myself doing would be like, if I'm in a city place, I did this actually in, in uh, arriving in England and I was walking around, I was trying to find this flat and it was like dark streets. I don't know anything. I have all my luggage. <laughs> right. You know, I'm just like, so like out of my element completely. Right. And I would, uh, instead of being on the sidewalk, I'd choose to walk like in the middle of the road, you know, right. so I'm like, on this might be side, maybe. Yeah, whatever. Right. This might be, I mean, it's, it's like dark. It's like, light. Right. right. You know, so I'm like, okay, I don't really want to be in this like dark area where if the, there is a potential of something, I'm a little bit more, it's like, oh, this could be like a secret. Right. You know, I'm like, I'm just gonna put myself right out in the middle. So right. it's very visible. Right. Is there a, I mean, maybe that was a no. terrible decision, but is there no, other no, stuff no, like no, that? No, no, no. So, so this is the thing that, that, that's that's what what I you know if you were in a seminar, and you put your hand up and you said like w why did I do that I go that's your instincts, your intuition your intelligence, taking a scenario, and and improvising a strategy that resonates with the three eyes, like if 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 we did a pros and cons of walking in the dark in the shadows near corners and cubby holes and alleys yeah. and stuff like that or walking on the street where cars might come by where people are more exposed bad guys only want one of three things property body or life hmm. bad guys don't want three things to happen to them they don't want for things to take too long they don't want to get caught they don't want to get hurt so when you when you combine those things and if i made it this like a, we had a whiteboard and we went let's look list the pros and cons of walking in the shadows in the dark Right. And walking on in the middle of the street where you've got more time and space, you're going to have therefore more opportunity to hear and see a potential threat, including a car or a mugger or a gang of skinheads or whatever it was. So there was like there's nothing it like it's it's it seems like an anomaly and obscure to you because you only needed it once. But that's the genius of our brain. Right. Of going yeah. like, what should I do here? 
you know, where, where if I said to you, dude, that could happen to you, like, you know, anywhere, like if you were in a subway and you were lost in a subway, I want you to walk on the tracks and I want you to, you go, no, like what if the train comes? Like, no, 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 just follow. Aaron did this once back. No, no, no. Like that, that worked there at two in the morning when you were lost or trying to find your way to a hotel or, or yeah. whatever. Right. So, so I love that shit. Mm. Like that's just, you know, uh, you know, I've been teaching now for, for decades and at every seminar, someone comes up to me at a break and goes, Hey man, uh, can I ask you if I handled this situation right? It was kind of like, I don't like to talk about this, but you know, I mean, it was, it was crazy. And I was like, I just want to know your thought. And I, and, and I always go, yeah, you did it right. Yeah, but I didn't even tell you what happened yet. Well, the You're fact, here. yeah, I mean, literally like, <laughs> oh, the fact that this isn't a seance <laughs> or a letter from jail tells me that you did it right. Can you do it better? Do you know how to debrief it, deconstruct it, reconstruct it? What can you learn from it? You know, that's, that's the formula that we teach people is like, you know, would, would you do that any different if you had a, if you had a do over? Yeah. How do you get, a, how do you get control? Maybe that's not the right word of the, 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 that fear response that just puts you in a more of a contracted place. Um, I don't have a simple answer other than, you know, when we came up with the concept, 20 years ago of no fear spelled K-N-O-W. Yeah. It was, you know, I was making a joke going and I, you know, I had, I had like every no fear shirt on. I'd do this as part of my shtick. I would go, hey guys, no fear shirt. You see the badass logo and everything. This one's fucking defective because I still get scared. Right. Right. They're going like, I don't know, maybe there, there's something with the printing and people would giggle and you didn't laugh at all, but it was meant to be funny. Well, right. Gotcha. You know, and, uh, the, uh, you know, so we would write no fear and I go, how many of you would like to have no fear? And like, yeah, I guess what it doesn't exist. And the idea that you think there's a place of no fear means that, that if you actually said, I guess I've got no fear anymore and something happened that triggered fear, you actually have two battles. You've got the stimulus that you still have to contend with. And then all of a sudden this self-awareness that you're fucking scared again and you thought you weren't. Yeah. That's even more compelling and potent than potentially a danger there because again mental toughness self-belief right and dan millman uh, you know you know dan millman he wrote uh, way of the peaceful warrior oh i love that book yeah great yeah book. well he's got some some great thoughts but he, he i share this in every seminar and, and and a lot of podcasts he has his line he says if you face just one opponent and you doubt yourself you're outnumbered hmm uh, you know, and I, I was like, man, I wish I'd said that. It's so good, right? <laughs> you just did. If, if you, you probably got it from somewhere yeah, else. If maybe, but <laughs> I, I, I attribute it to him. Yeah. Um, he goes, if you face just one opponent and you doubt yourself, you're outnumbered. It's two against zero. You don't believe in yourself. This guy obviously doesn't think you got shit. That's why he picked you. And so the concept there is that, that uh, I was on a parallel path of trying to understand the psychology of fear. And, uh, and as, and, and we've, we've done years and years and years of research and we've got really neat graphs and charts and whiteboards and scenarios and exercises to help people man, uh, uh, um, uh, not manifest it. Uh, we trigger these synthetic fear dumps. So you stress inoculate so they can manage the confrontation. But the biggest epiphany is like, there's no such thing as no fear. There's K and O W fear that you go, I'm going to do this and I will probably have a fear spike and I'm going to learn how to use fear as a fuel yeah. as opposed to having it be this weight. So in our, in our, the, you know, we created a program for the CrossFit community. Uh, it's, it's, par it's based on our be your own bodyguard program, but we'd use a lot of, uh, um, CrossFit movements to help hack the process. Uh, you know, we tell people like if, if you can do a push up, if you can do a wall ball, if you can do a burpee, you've got the same kinetic chain as a palm strike, right? If I can do a, a of, you know, 10 fast push ups, and I got a bad guy standing in front of me, and I'm like, hey man, I don't want any trouble. If I see, oh shit, this is like fingers played outside 90, the kinetic chain of a push up, yep. I can fire. What's missing from there is my, my, the personal reason why I got to do it, which we, we go over in the class, and understanding aggression and danger. But the kinetic chain is, is loosely exactly the same. You know, if I can do knees to elbow, then I can grab somebody by the head and bring my knees up and knee somebody in the face. Am I a good tie boxer? No, but I can knee somebody in the face and trust me, a knee to the face is a knee to the face. Yeah. You know, is, 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 you know, a pro MMA fighter going to throw a harder, faster one? Fuck yeah. But there's nobody in the world that's going to let 
an untrained person knee them in the nuts or knee them in the face. It still fucking hurts. Yeah. So that's that big connection is is telling people like you 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 question the. The, the, the depth of the question is, how do we manage and control that fear spike? Yeah, develop a relationship yeah. with fear would be a yeah. better way to reward yeah. that, and that's, and that's what it is. is so we tell a people healthy like, relationship. Yeah. We tell people, hey, fear will either stymie or weigh you down, so you create emotional inertia to play on the, the physics term of an, uh, a body's inability to move. Now it's our, our mind and our body's inability to move. That's that fetal position. I'm fucking frozen in fear. Yeah. If I tell myself, oh, this workout's going to be scary. This sparring's going to be scary. This run's going to be scary. But I'm going to do it anyhow. I'm starting to just embrace and getting to know fear. And the more you do that, the more you you realize, well, you know, that that didn't kill me. I can do it again. Yeah. Cool. Micro battles. I like the I like yeah. the idea of like introducing it's like before the 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 storm comes. Like that's the time to paint the house and get yeah. all the stuff situated. Yeah. I just I actually just posted something yesterday on on some Japanese writer on the storm mm. it's it's really uh I didn't, I didn't memorize it it's quite long but just the idea that that when the storm comes the paraphrasing is that you oftentimes don't even know how you got through it but when you do get through it it's completely changed you you're a new person yeah and so the idea the message there was you know have you seen those memes you know the storm said you know let and i and then oh, I yeah, answered, I, I am I, the storm and i, I was like i, I never love that I hate it. I get all hyped up. I hate that one. God. And so we can never be friends. Right. Right. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Are we we found out at the end of the podcast. <laughs> um, and let me tell you why I hate it. Because because the storm's the storm. Right? And you need to navigate the storm. That's the metaphor. And I get what it means, be the storm. But you're not the storm. The storm is the storm. Mm. And you've got to, life is the storm. Your girlfriend breaking up you is the storm. Your bank calling your loan is the storm. Those right. two guys that mug you, that was the storm. Yep. And then, you know, like, wh what did you learn about yourself? And how does that equate to self-actualization? How does that how does that change your resiliency? How does that change your and so you'll re read the thing I posted on my Instagram. Yeah, I love to check it out. But it's basically just saying like I get I get the intention of the original meme, but sorry, you know you're not the storm. I've never seen you like oh my god, it's Aaron. He's fucking raining on me. Like <laughs> like right there, storm that guy. Like, he said he was the storm, and he literally is. He's like a giant cloud right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a so we got we got to wrap up soon. But I I um, as you were saying. Instead of like we focus on that that five second incidents where where actually violence is happening, um, but it's actually like a five minute experience. And then I would as you're saying that I was thinking, well, what about like thirty minutes before that? What about like twenty four hours before that? What about right. like three months before that? Right. You know, setting yourself up maybe even like posturally. When when you when you understand the formula that we created of detect, defuse, defend, and we understand that that there's a there's a critical moment where someone says. Uh, hey, uh, yeah, you're going to be okay, but we need to do this operation, and this is the first time I can get you surgeries in two months. Like, if you only start, like, you know, I'm not going to think about this till the day I go. Like, like that's a lot of pressure there. So when you understand the timeline, you can start, you can go, shit, I got to get this thing done to my knee. I'm going to start doing physio now. I'm going to start working out now. I'm going to start, I'm actually going to read this book on neuroplasticity. I'm going to, you know, listen to this stuff. I'm going to work on my mobility and stability so that I, I heal way faster yeah. with mentally and, and physically. You know, I'm going to eat this shit. I'm going to stop, whatever it is, right? I'm just using it like a innocuous example. Um, if, if uh, uh, most people will get a dog after the house is broken in. Most people get an alarm system after the house is broken in. Most people will get, you know, tire insurance on the next car after, you know, they run over some shit and they realize, oh my God, you know, this cost me twice as much as yeah. that. And so we oftentimes reactively, and this is, you know, as I tell people like, you know, life insurance, a lot of, a lot of people who understand the importance of life insurance get it. The only problem is you have to die to collect it, so it's not practical. Yeah, right. So I always make a joke in terms of personal safety stuff is think of it as life, ins life extension insurance, shit that will prolong. And you do that with you know, taking care of your house or taking care of your car. Most, most of us don't do it with taking care of ourselves. Um, so just that, that the five minutes that I, that example I gave you a detective who's defend over five minutes, that is literally like an opportunistic attack. Somebody grabbing you, mean, meaning you're, you're at the beach and 
they're scumbags on the beach and they're watching for people who have no situational awareness and they're going to run into the water and they can come and grab your backpack. Right. Right. Um, so if you understand that, you understand where do you want to sit, who do you want to be with, you know, what are you going to bring to the beach in case, and, and it just changes your situational awareness. But that exact map or model can be applied to a bigger picture thing. You just look at that scenario, and then you just extrapolate from there and just think yeah. about it instead like of... You see the chess game. I yeah. see 12 moves, whereas someone that might more likely get robbed sees one move. Right. Right, they're they're like I, mean, I don't see twice. I see maybe like oh, you know half a move, but yeah, somebody's yeah. much more. So I had I, I want to just to give an ex example. This might this might hit home, is uh, I'm at the seminar. I'm explaining all these this, this formula, and I go, listen, you have D two D one D two D three. The bad guy also operates under. He doesn't use our acronyms, but he's in his detect and avoid. Oh, this guy looks like a hard target. Yeah. Oh shit, this guy, you know, oh he's got a tap out shirt on and cauliflower ears. Nope, I'm not gonna. You know, attack him. He looks like an MMA guy. I'll pick a soft target, right? An totally. easy target, right? And then the verbal is the same, and then the physical is the same. So I go like, if when you understand that, you you can understand the chessboard, and you know, you start to move around. And so I'm explaining all this stuff, and this this guy at the seminar puts his hand up. He says, "Hey, Mr. Blower, like I, I don't mean to come across as a contrarian, because I agree with everything you're saying, but one time I just got hit." in the back of the head, didn't know the guy got sucker punched. So you say like victims of violence always, you know, knew something was wrong. In this case here, I had actually no, there were no pre-contact indicators. He just hit me in the back of the head. And he looks at me like, do you have an explanation for that? And he goes, but I love, I'm loving what you're saying. I'm just like, this happened to me. Yeah. I'm not trying to like stump the band and be a dick. And I went, well, you are being a dick, but let me, let me think about this. So there are anomalies, and if something just happens and there's no explanation, it's a black box moment. Like, also, we, sh we should only be thinking about things that'll probably happen, not possibly happen. That's a big reframe in the class. People go, well, what about this? I go, has that ever happened in the history of humankind? No, but it, like, so then like, yeah. let's not invest any time or energy on it. Let's, let's right. work on what's uh, possible, uh, what's probable, not what's possible. So I say to the guy, so you got hit, so, so let me just peel the onion on this. You're in a bar, yeah, and someone hit you in the back of the head. You never saw it coming, no pre-contact, you know nothing. You go, yeah. And you never seen this guy before. He goes, no. You didn't know him, you had no contact, no prior contact. And he goes like this, he goes, like light pause. I go, light pause. So you knew him or you didn't know him? I said, he said, I didn't know him. I said, but you kind of, your body language is telling me there's like some backstory. What's the backstory? He goes, well, like nothing, like, I mean, the week before, we had had some words. We bumped into each other, and it was mm. like we were in the bar. And, and I said, and, and you went back to the same bar the week later? She says, yeah, it's like, like the place that I go Friday night. I said, dude, you had seven days to prepare for that punch. Right. Right? You know, so you, know, you go back to the same bar where you, had, you almost had a fight with a guy and sit with your back to the wall with no friends. Right. If he's an asocial motherfucker, he might sucker punch you. Yeah. You had seven days to prepare for that. <laughs> right? So. Yeah. The other... Um, thing that is interesting that I, I've, I've read that I'm, I'm sure you've, you've seen is uh, how posture affects the likelihood of being attacked or mugged. Like body language, yeah. posture. Yeah. yeah, so a person is exactly what you're saying. Sure. Like if you're a predator and you're looking for prey, ideally you're going to find someone that's like injured, you know, or someone right. that injured, it could be structurally injured in and, the sense of like hunching over, just they're not strong, they won't be able to protect. Right, or, or let's, let's be uh, uh, more esoteric, injured is as in like when one of my dogs, we've got five dogs, when one of my dogs is um, sick or hurts her paw, the other ones like pick up on that right away, right? And, right. They're, and they're, even though they're buddies in a pack, there's, there's, a, there's a period where they, you, they, there's a little bit more aggression. Hmm. Hey, yeah, that's exactly. my bad. You know, like, right. what are you going to do about what that? I'm taking do? your bone, right? And because they're animals, right? And so it's, it's a fascinating thing. So you were, use the word, body language or, or, or injured, but metaphysically, the injury could be, I can tell that this person isn't going to protect themselves. That's exactly what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. With the injury, you know, like um, all the levels of potent like that. So, so, so bad guys scan, and this is this, this, the rash, the, you know, rationalizing. And so the, the emotional brain there, the bad guy's emotional brain and their cognitive brain are balancing and going, you know, okay, that person is alone. That's their analytical brain and then they're going now that person's a hard target there's something wrong yeah. with that and and but listen 
the, the way I teach self-defense is, is I empower people from the inside and try to give them like the skills to make their own decisions, their own moves, because I don't like to tell people, here's what I want you to do. Like, you're really short, so I need you to buy high heels. Yeah, you, sir. I want you in high heels because your height is going to attract. Vi like, I don't, I'm not into all that stuff. Like, walk how you walk. Yeah. Just understand you're responsible for your safety. You're responsible yeah. for your family's safety. Uh, but I do agree with you when we talk about, you know, that, that um, of the, there are three factors that are going to influence things during D2, the defuse, yeah. de-escalation. Uh, your body language, your tone, and the words you choose. And your body language, uh, uh, and you know this, but social science scientists have studied this, your body language is 60% of your communication, your tone is 30, and your words you use or choose are, are, are 10%. Yeah. And so, you know, if we have a confrontation and I start to back away and I go, Aaron, I'll fucking kill you if you say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, like, oh boy. Right, right, if my body language is recoiling and my voice is doing this, even yeah. though I said I'll fucking kill you, yeah. you're like, what did you say? Yeah. Right? I get stronger. It's right? almost it's almost like I pull power out of you. It's, it's it, like you, you, by you losing, it literally like right, goes into the right. person like, oh, I'm, right. I just got a foot bigger somehow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. You got a yeah. foot smaller, you got a foot bigger. Yeah. Uh, the other god dang so this last 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 thing Go for it. um so i was living in uh i lived in hawaii for five years nice. and i had a, a so i have this this experience of seeing like very clearly tourists like you can just spot a tourist so easily right you know and so it's like okay the person's got you know, okay, they got some sunburn, they're wearing some stupid Aloha shirt, they're running a red Mustang with the top down, <laughs> they have brand new sandals they're, that are all like, they're on their, they're on their, yeah, all these different things. And it's right. like all that self-defense, like there's almost, yep. and I, I, I've had this experience in my own mind, actually, I'm not like a predator. Um, but I've had the experience of like, I can fucking rob that guy. You right. know, when I, I was like 19, 20, I wouldn't actually do that, right. but I had that feeling of like, they have in my mind, it's like, oh, they have lots of money. They're on this this thing. And it's not me actually planning to do it. It's me putting my head in, because that's what happens. Right. The red Mustang gets robbed all the time. So it's like, what is that? And you're like, they're just you know, putting all these signs like right. a yard sale. <laughs> right. right. That's all self-defense as well. Yeah, I 100%. think like clothing. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. It's, it's, and we talk about that. In fact, it's an exercise that I give people to improve. And here's something great for your audience is if, if if you're not interested in, and just, just for clarification, you know, when I talked about my one day be your bodyguard, I'm a martial artist and have been for like 50 years. I started doing shit when I was seven. I'm 58 now. And, and I love all of that stuff. You know, watch the UFC last night. I love that. I'm friends with a lot of those guys and all that. You know, so people think when I go, yeah, be your own bodyguard one day that I'm putting down martial arts. So if you have a love for that, go train anything. Go do, go do something. Just don't confuse technical martial arts with what you're talking about right now that you could be a jiu-jitsu in in you know black belt in jiu-jitsu and you're you're out taking a surfing lesson and you come back and your car was broken into because you rented a red mustang <laughs> tank with a you know canvas roof and you know you were so excited about the about the surf you left your shit exposed in the car you went oh, it's locked yeah right and it, that's part of self-defense that shit changes your life um mm. so one of the exercises that that you guys can do listening to this and and is to for as long as you feel that you you need to is look at people to cultivate a deeper understanding of what the bad guy looks like the opportunistic bad guy is to pretend you're a mugger yeah, or a rapist for a couple of hours and and you know don't let it consume your life you don't have to go too far but you can go I could take her purse. I could steal that that lady's car. Look, oh, look, her her car is running at the gas station, and she's standing at the back, or she left her keys in. You know, like you go, wow. So if you can see it, and you're not even a professional, then you can adapt that information immediately to your life, and that will make you situationally yeah. safer, just in your behavior, but in also some of the things, you know, that you that you do and you and and you don't do. Uh, the other thing is after you've done that is to detach and watch yourself in your daily routine and ask yourself when would you mug you yep when would you attack you yeah you know what do you do it's part of your routine that exposes you and then walk around your house and walk around your car and look at your office and and just thinking about that stuff and some of you may feel 
Like I've had people go like, Hey, I did that. And I got really paranoid. I go well, like that'll subside. It's like, you know, it's, it's like going to take a, like a blood test, right? You're a little bit nervous going in, you're waiting for the results, you're nervous. And then when they say yes, or change your diet or do that, life acclimates after that. So, you know, it's normal to, when you start thinking about your personal safety to have a little agitation. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and, but it's important. It's almost like what you were talking about. Yeah. That's all like, that's all like yeah. stoic philosophy, yeah. you know, preparing for your death, preparing for like the, the worst case scenario, right. as opposed to always being optimistic, the secret, it's like, what if I just go deep into like all the worst case scenarios and just experience that, yeah. um, same with like, uh, f- with protecting casinos or like hacking, you know, banks or whatever, the people that have those jobs are the people that used to rob the casino right. or rob the bank, whatever, you know? So it's like now they're the expert because right. they've gone so deeply into all of that. Right. Anyways, how do people uh, learn more about your stuff and from your podcast? Get in. Yeah, right. Yeah, listen, right. listen to the podcast. Right. This is going to uh, go on good. forever. Yeah. Just hang out with us. It's a yeah, uh, Truman Show. We're just going to talk for, for days. I wonder that every day. I'm 50 yeah. 50 if this is the Truman Show. Right. I wouldn't be that surprised. I'd be like <laughs> a little surprised, but not like 100% surprised. Yeah. Do you watch Westworld? No. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I just, just because it's, 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 uh, I heard it was great, and then it took me a couple of episodes to get into it, and it's yeah. like mind-boggling, really interesting. Script. Is it like the Truman Show guy? Or well, like it's it's just your, it's just idea up? that that uh, um, you you got to watch a couple. Of, it's, All right, it's, I'll do it. It's it's, I'll it's this. You might hate it, but it's it's incredibly violent. But it's uh, it's this idea of these what they call hosts or these uh, you know artificial intelligent ro- robots. But they're the the idea would be like I would know that you're actually a robot. Like it's so sophisticated, right. and. Uh, um, uh, but I'm not going to, in case you get into don't it, don't ruin it. Say, yeah. yeah. But, uh, no people so uh, watch you, Westworld. West, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It, it just made me think of Truman show. There was, you know, where, you know, there, you know, there were people in there that knew it and he didn't. Right. Yeah. And, and so, uh, it's, it's that, uh, but if they just Google Tony Blower, I got a bunch of websites. I got no fear today, which is all on our, our fear management. We've got, uh, a few different websites, way too many are, IT people go, you have too many websites. I go, I, I can't help it. I'm trying to keep them in compartmentalized. Mm. Uh, but our main one, our big one, like for our training, is just Blower Spear. Cool. If you just Google Tony Blower, you'll. Yeah, that's always the easiest way. Social media? Social media, Instagram, Tony Blower. Tony Blower. We have a Spear system one. He's busy. Spear dot system. If you're into our, the more of the tactical, technical side, uh, Facebook. Cool. To, you know, same stuff, Tony Blower. Thanks for doing this, man. Appreciate it. Fun, man. I need to take a raging Niagara Falls piss right now. Go for it. Align Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning into that conversation. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. There's some ways that you can support this podcast, one of which you can pick up an Align Band, which is a heavy-duty resistance band. It comes along with a door anchor and a carrying case and a video guide on how to mobilize those joints and integrate that body of yours. Really great stuff. You can be found at AlignTherapy.com and also on Amazon.com. Um, thank you also so much for utilizing the Amazon affiliate link on the right-hand sidebar of the podcast page. Bookmark that thing. Anytime you purchase some crap on Amazon, purchase that crap. Through that link, we get a percentage of it. It costs you nothing. And I think that's enough. Thank you guys so much for reviews on iTunes. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Pow.